All right, welcome back, YouTube. I uh, just wanted to get another video up of the actual circuit design. Uh, you've seen the circuit in several of the other videos, but come to think of it, I've never actually gone through and in depth, you know, what's actually on that board kind of thing. There is a parts list and a schematic, but seeing it actually soldered down onto the board is something else. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. So here we go. This is a 2 by 3 inch PCB. And as you can see, I have, I'm using about one square inch of real estate on this board. Okay. Here's a razor blade for comparison. Typical razor blade. Um, your average pen. Okay. And the CFL that you've, 27 watt CFL that you've seen in many of my videos. Okay. So let me explain what's going on here. This node right here, uh, that's V plus and minus. Okay, let's see how quick, how close I can get into that. Apparently not too close. Anywho, this is V plus and V minus. Right there. Flip it over. You can see that I have the positive voltage going to the start of L1. And the end of L1 goes to the collector of the transistor all right and then you have the base was which is a combination of L2 uh, actually there's two leads here um, but I actually have them soldered together so I can actually use either one of these terminals to plug this coil into okay um, they're both on the same node as you can see there in the back it's all soldered together all right and then that's fed into the base Okay, along with these diodes. Now, th on this particular circuit, I, I, I put three diodes on it. Um, these circuits, this one right here, only has one diode. This one right here um, only has one diode. And uh, this is the circuit that I'm going to use to drive with higher voltages once I get, get, get a hold of the higher supply. But I can use this, this chip interchangeably with any of these parts, with any of these coils with any of these power supplies um, and this chip how I have this here this, this little circuit board will function identical to these two coils so I can basically swap this chip may made it to that heat sink to that coil or to this one um, and I'll have the exact same results as I've been showing you in the previous videos okay so I got both these guys powered up just like that um, so there it is guys that's all it is so basically what happens is the coil L1 which is this guy right here the pancake uh, operates at a frequency of around 1 megahertz DC and this transistor is what controls those oscillations through the coil. So essentially, instead of a tra traditional Tesla coil that uses AC and spark gaps and capacitors and all that other crazy stuff, I'm just feeding pulse DC generated by this transistor and resistor combination through the L1, and then those pulses at 1 megahertz are wirelessly transferred to the secondary coil okay now the positioning of this plays a huge role so if you notice I don't have it sitting flat all the way on the bottom and it's not in the middle as some people do it or towards the top it seems to work best right here um, and that's also the reason why I have this huge heat sink the huge heat sink is not necessary however when assembling this thing until you find the sweet spot if you're a little higher or if you're too low with the L1 around the L2 that thing gets really hot the circuit will still operate oh I don't zap myself the circuit um, gets really hot if this is too high or too low uh, I'm not exactly sure why but that's why I have the massive heat sink so when I'm you know messing around with it if this gets a little too high or a little too low I'm not going to burn out my transistor, but once you do find the sweet spot around the L2, 
uh, that heat sink will actually remain cool to the touch. I just use massive heat sinks um, to protect the transistor as I'm troubleshooting. But once I have it resonating perfectly uh, with the L2 high enough around the L1, I don't have I don't have any thermal issues to worry about. Uh, I'll have to get a um, a laser thermal gun so I can prove that too. I'll just shine shine the laser at the base of the transistor where it attaches to the heat sink, and then we can get definitive temperatures from that too. Um, that's that'll be coming in more videos. Um, but yeah, guys, this is it. This is the circuit as it stands uh, without the heat sink. That's all it is. Uh, three terminals, a resistor, and only technically you only need one diode for this to work. Um, but I have three on this one just so you can, just to show you how you know it is possible, and it may or may not help. Uh, and I'll find out later as soon as I get DC power supplies that are high enough voltage to actually take advantage of those extra diodes if it even if it even works all the process of trial and error for you of those of you who have not seen the other videos or have taken the time to look through them um, that is a TIP 31C transistor there you go. I'm pretty sure I got that in good frame, so you all can see that. And that circuit is identical to all these circuits right over here. That one and that one. Same circuit, guys. And these are the results. Right, let me zoom out. There we go. All right. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.